Reading from the Let's Go. Okay. Reading from Hunter Collins. Today, real analysis lecture eight. But before that, I actually got one of my quizzes back and I got a pretty good score. So, that's not the point of today's lecture though. Today, we're going to be proving convergence of a series. So, you've probably already seen a fair amount of convergence tests in Calc 2. Like, for example, the P-series test. If you have the sequence or the sum, 1 over p to the n, or 1 over n to the p, this will converge if and only if p is greater than or equal to, not equal to, p if it's greater than 1. But did you actually get a proof of that, or did someone just tell it to you? So, let's make sure this is actually correct. How is this verifiable? Well, here is how we can prove these convergence tests. Essentially, what we want to do is if we have a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus a4 dot dot dot, and it's increasing or decreasing, so in general, if it is monotone, which means it's either always increasing or decreasing, so like this, for example, might be an increasing sequence, so all of these terms are positive. It will converge if there is some sequence greater than it at every single point. So Bn is always greater than or equal to An for all n in the natural numbers. And this sequence converges also known as the sequence having a bail. And it diverges if there's just some sequence C of n, so C1 plus C2 plus C3, etc., such that Cn is less than or equal to An for all n in the natural numbers. And See, this still diverges. So what's an example of that? Well, an example is the harmonic series itself. 1 plus 1 half plus 1 third plus 1 fourth, etc. So here's the genius formula behind it. Here's how we can prove this. So this diverges, obviously, but... How do we know that? For sure, for sure. So, here's the proposition. Let's say we make a different sequence. So this is A1, A2, A3. So let's say we make a different sequence. B1 is 1. B2 is 1 half. B3 is 1 fourth. B4 is also 1 fourth. B5 is 1 eighth, and so on and so forth. And you can probably see what the pattern is going to be here. B6 is 1 eighth. B7 is 1 eighth. B8 is 1 eighth. B9 is 1 sixteenth, and so on and so on. So, of course, this is always either less than or equal to every term in the an sequence. This is equal to, this is equal to, this is less than, this is equal to, this is less than, this is less than, this is less than, this is equal to, this is less than, and so on and so forth. So that must mean that the sum of all of these in total is less than the sum of all of these. But wait a moment. The way we have this formulated We've got b1 plus b2. If we sum up the next two terms, they're just 2 over 4. If we sum up the next four terms, they're just 4 over 8. If we sum the next eight terms after that, they're just 8 over 16, so on and so forth. So increasingly big intervals, just 1 half, 1 half, 1 half, 1 half. But it's not like it runs out at some point. Just an infinite sequence of 1 halves obviously diverges, right? It just 
the sequence 1 plus n over 2 if a is uh, 2 to the n. So, for example, if a is 2 to the 4, which is 16, then it's just 1 plus 4 over 2. And, of course, there's no end to this. It just keeps growing and growing and growing, although very slowly. And at some point, this diverges because 1 plus n over 2 is linear. It just keeps going up. So, that is how we know that this harmonic series diverges because there is a series that is less than it and uh, less than or equal to it in every possible term and yet this sequence still diverges so this one must diverge as well so then what's an example of a sequence converging let's take one plus one over two squared plus one over three squared plus one over four squared etc so then you get one plus 1 over 2 times 1, plus 1 over 3 times 2, plus 1 over 4 times 3, etc. And actually, how do we calculate this? Well, it should be pretty obvious. We have 1 over n times n minus 1 is the pattern right now. So, how can we express that? Well, it's probably already pretty obvious. The hints everywhere says n minus n minus 1 is equal to 1. So this is just n over n times n minus 1 minus n minus 1 over n times n minus 1, which once we cancel these out, it's just 1 over n minus 1 minus 1 over n. So we've got this telescoping series where we have 1 plus 1 over of 1 minus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 minus 1 over 3, and it just keeps going. These all keep canceling out until at some point in the sequence of partial sums, you get to some final thing that doesn't cancel out minus 1 over n. But as n increases, as we add more and more terms, 1 over n approaches 0, so we just get 2 plus 1 over n, which as n approaches infinity, this sequence just approaches 2. Oh, this is the negative, by the way. So the sequence is bounded, the sequence of partial sums. And of course, this is greater than, right? Because 1 over 2 times 1 is greater than 1 over 2 times 2. You have a smaller thing on the denominator, a greater actual uh, the greater the fraction is. The smaller the denominator, the greater the fraction. So 1 over 3 times 2 is greater than 1 over 3 times 3. 1 over 4 times 3 is greater than 1 over 4 times 4. So on and so forth. So, since this converges, and this is an upper bound for our sequence, this must also converge too. And it does, to pi squared over 6. That's a story for another time. So, yeah, that's divergence and convergence of infinite series in a few minutes. Thank you, everybody, for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.